Thank you to anybody other than Andy. <laughs> uh, you know, I spent some time trying to make sense of uh, what I was asked to talk about. Um, and what I was asked to talk about, I rather thought I uh, downgraded somewhat because it was about, um, as Andy outlined, the origin. So, at the moment, uh, we are. If you look at the game plan, as people like myself saw it, and we may have got it wrong, I'm the first person to admit that I did not for one moment see the, the um, crisis developing as fast and as deeply as it has. I expected the rate to slide, I expected inflation to get worse, all of these sorts of things. I wasn't surprised when the government invented a new rate of inflation to hide the actual rate of inflation, and then foolishly went on publishing the actual rate of inflation at the same time, and I refer to the, the PDL, monthly PDL is, is, is compiled in, in ZWL, and it shows what a nonsense the uh, uh, so-called uh, blend rate is. Um, who came up with, well, we know who came up with the blend rate, so we won't go there. But the game plan was, as I understood it, to somehow keep the economy ticking over until elections, and then um, after that uh, we would uh, presumably sit down with donors or whatever and try and find a way out of it. Well, as events would, happen, would, would uh, uh, demonstrate, that didn't work, did it? The currency collapsed in short order 80% at the last count as of yesterday in the last month. That is called by, I'm sorry, Comrade Manguja isn't here because I, I would like to have had a, another joust with him. Last time we were here, to get, we had a joust. Um, uh, I won, obviously, because it was, it's like taking candy from kids, I'm afraid. But the fact of the matter is that um, the policy of the claims from the Reserve Bank, from the Ministry of Finance, we've achieved stability, da 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 da, -da. Uh, inflation is coming down. How many times did you hear that in the last year from Anguja, from Turley, from the President and others? And where are we today? We're at S Nobody knows what inflation is because we're not allowed to know. Um, we, we're given this, uh, what I can only call Mickey Mouse calculation based on 70% dollar um, transactions stroke and 30% ZWL transactions. The stats office itself which, pre which prepared this then comes out with what we call a Pisces study and the Pisces study shows that in rural areas it's 70% but in urban areas it's 56%. And we then had the other day the president of the CZI saying um, presumably seriously, um, in criticism of suggestions of dollarization, uh, that we, quote unquote, don't know who we is, but presumably he means the industrialists, cannot afford to pay salaries in US dollars. I bet, and I have no evidence, that we, in a bit of commerce, pay our bosses and ourselves in US dollars but no, not the old ordinary Joes um, who do the work. So, we have this attempt to operate a dual economy, dual currency system. Side by side, a dual economy and a dual currency. Now, uh, it used to be said, and uh, I don't want to, well I don't mind criticising the governor in his absence, but I wish he were here to answer for himself. But the governor used to say until relatively recently, a few months ago, that the policy was de-dollarisation. The policy is no longer, according to him, de-dollarisation. It is an optimal balance between the US dollar, which he, at the point, said 70%, and the local currency, 30%.
Now, this is absolute nonsense, of course. There's no such thing as an optimal balance. How could you work that out? And if you take the money supply figures, we haven't seen them yet, but if you just project what must be happening to the money supply from the exchange rate, it's probably now 90% or 85% US dollars against 10-15% uh, Zimbabwe dollars. How much of it is, is of, of turnovers are in Zim dollars and in uh, US dollars? I don't know. Um, you'd have to go around each different companies and you'll get different uh, estimates uh, of that, uh, that reality. But we know that, just, just from one's own experience, we know what the reality is. There's another reality I'll tell you about. If you look at the poverty datum line, as of May, May, I think that's the most recent one, was $40,000 per month per person. Okay? Um, calculate that in US dollars. Going back to 2020, 2020 yes, um, uh, it was $58 US dollars per month per person. Today, after the great success of stabilizing the currency and convergence and all these other things, it's 12 US dollars. And a loaf of bread costs over a dollar. So there you go. You, uh, the poverty data line will allow you 12 loaves of bread a month. Is that feasible? But we, we industrialists represented here can't afford to pay the workers in US dollars. Sorry guys, you're going to have to because that's the way we're going. If you look at where we are in terms of the options open to us, which is what I want to talk about, um, <laughs> there are no good options on the table. That we can be sure of. The best of a bad lot at the moment, it would seem, is probably dollarization, re-dollarization. The officials, again the comrade governor is sadly not here, would say two things, at least. We say lots of things, usually contradictory, but we won't go there. The first of these would be, we don't have the dollars to dollarize. Really? Do you know how many dollars are in the country? No, you don't have a clue. So, you know, we know two billion in, the, in, FCA, in FCAs, something like two billion. Depends what exchange rate you use. Um, but because the, all that the government will do, or the a Reserve Bank, uh, which is not even remotely independent, it's not a central bank in the proper sense of the word, um, all they do is publish uh, money supply figures in local currency, so you have to guess your way from, from, from there onward. But there are $2 billion there and there's an awful lot of money outside the system we know, from safe deposit boxes to the rural areas, etc., etc., etc. None of us know how much. But we've been through that before. We've dollarized before. Tendai <laughs> was there and did it, or implemented it, uh, and, and knows, and he can tell us. Um, but that is the reality. We, I, I can see no other option. If you go through the other options that you hear, uh, I was meeting a whole lot of business guys yesterday, um, and it was a fascinating discussion. But one of them said, well, what about the idea of a currency based on gold tokens? And I just, I'm afraid, shook my head at that and said, no, no that's not a starter. Um, uh, then we said, he said, well, what about the RAND? Well, that's no longer on anybody's um, radar screen, as far as I can see. And who wants to tie up to a current currency that's in pretty much terminal decline itself? <laughs> you know, why not sort of talk about jumping from frying pans into fires? So forget that one. Um, so what about somehow making the dual system work? Well, how are we going to do that? Uh, we're going to have more and more draconian controls. It's the only way you could do it. Um, as it is, we use the, the, the liberalized exchange rate. We send out something lightheartedly referred to as a financial intelligence unit. The words intelligence and reserve bank don't really go together too, too, too well. But um, there it is, and the FIU goes around and says, 
thou shalt not increase your prices more than 10% over the official rate. And then we have a central bank that speculates against its own currency. How does it do that? By issuing gold coins. And saying, look, if you want to protect the value of your currency, don't, don't hold them dollars, hold gold coins or gold tokens or whatever. I mean, how can that system uh, ever operate? So, you keep, by elimination, coming back to dollarization as the only viable way out. And dollarization is not going to work unless it is backed by some form of international support, whatever, which would have to begin by re-engagement. Um, and that is, of course, involves a, a heavy political price, which the government is obviously uh, unwilling to pay. So, if you're not prepared to do that, if you're not prepared to, to re-engage, then um, you're thrown back on the sort of crazy suggestions we have. We're going to join, for instance, the BRICS and we're going to join the BRICS currency. Only problem is there isn't one. So uh, you, that, forget that one. And Zimbabwe is a BRIC. The term BRIC always was large emerging economies. Zimbabwe is not a large, uh, uh, and, and not even these days, sadly, an emerging economy, but a, a very low income one. So, as I said earlier, you've got an unpalatable unappetizing menu of options and which all bring you back I'm afraid to dollarization especially as we're 80 percent of the way or whatever already reversing reversing reality um, is not going to be very easy um, and I don't think uh, after all the uh, nonsense and we're going to hear in the next two months in the run-up to elections um, we're going to find that, that we're back to, to facing up to the reality of dollarization or struggling a, a, along as we are. The problem about just struggling along as we are, um, and again it would, be, it would have been good to hear the governor's views on this, are, are first of all things like interest rates. We have an absurd interest rate uh, structure at the moment. We know that something like 70% plus of bank lending is in US dollars. Uh, we do not have, as far as I know anyway, statutory limitations on interest rates for US dollars. But we do have statutory limitations on interest rates in Zimbabwe dollars. They are, are, are quite obviously nonsensical, and the Reserve Bank admits it. It shows uh, a minimum rate of 150%, but then it also shows uh, a table which I insisted upon when I was at the Reserve Bank, that namely a table of, which gave you a breakdown of actual lending uh, on, a, on a weighted average basis. And that gives you a figure of around 80% what the loans are being made at. So the Reserve Bank says thou shalt not lend less than 150%, but the banks are lending at, according to their own figures, 80%. So, um, what is the point of having a minimum if you are then going to have so many exceptions that the, the minimum doesn't mean anything? And that's true, of course, of so many aspects of Zimbabwe today. Um, I know today, in fact, driving here, uh, when you come to the, the, uh, the traffic lights at outside Prince Edward School there, You've got a red light and a green light um, for, for, for the traffic game the same way. This is Zimbabwe economic policy making at its best. Um, then the more insidious and worrying aspect of the current situation is that we're going back to, say, 2015, 2016. You'll recall then we, we had a situation where we had a dollar. That, that was the currency. And it was one to one. Uh, that gap opened up. It was measured by the old mutual um, implicit rate, the OMIR. And if, like the CPI and Zim dollars, uh, the government abolished it and said, no, 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 no. You take, take those, uh, those shares off the stock exchange because they're telling us something we don't want to hear. We're coming back to that situation today. 
um, where we have got uh, dollar contamination, if you like, where we have some dollars that are backed by US uh, dollars, and we had that uh, very interesting exchange last week when Bank ABC said, look, uh, we, want, we want to make a distinction between foreign TTs coming in, uh, these are dollars, and local uh, tr transfers, uh, question mark. Uh, we then had um, one of the uh, uh, propagandists, uh, Persistence, who's, I don't know if he's here. Anyway, our Persistence was banging away in the Sunday Mail, where he revealed a, a number of how, my, how many uh, or how much of the money in the... Uh, uh, Nostros is in fact quote unquote local Nostros as against uh, international Nostros. Now, um, once you once you start making that kind of uh, distinction, then you know, you're going back to where we were to, to 2015, 2016, etc. And you've got the gap opening up, and we know that gap is opening up. Already, people who sell up, sell their homes and so on, they adapt and want to get their dollars out of the country. They have to they're going to get a different value from the value they would get here. So, um, what are the implications of, if I'm right, uh, of re-dollarization? Um, I think what we have to accept is that we will need a period of high interest rates, real interest rates, not the nonsense that we're getting um, from the authorities, where we have massively negative um, real interest rates. I did a quick sum yesterday on the money supply growth rate, and I reckon it's 800%. So when Steve Hankey talks about inflation being over a thousand, he's probably not all that wrong, I don't know. We don't know, and we're not going to be told what the real inflation rate is, because it's too embarrassing. So, but the, the, the reality is there, that money supply is growing at a huge rate and interest rates are negative. There is no way, no way at all, that that can be called a tight monetary policy. And yet, we get that statement from the Governor, from the Minister of Finance, who adds that he has a tight fiscal policy. That is simply not true. Look at how much he is borrowing from the Reserve Bank, as well as from other banks. The figures are there, something like 500% growth in the last year. And then look again at uh, the term sec of the uh, of, uh, Ministry of Finance, Jolly George, saying, oh, no, 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 we, we, we haven't printed a, a dollar. <laughs> They're printing it like there's no tomorrow. It's just that we don't call it printing in, this, in the pure sense. It's, it's issuing bits of paper. That, that for which there is no, uh, there are no reserves, or so to speak, other than so-called statutory reserves, which are not meant to be included anyway. I think we have to accept that, um, although the governor's uh, repeated insistence that there are not enough dollars to go around, we've been there before, and we're going to have to do it again. Um, and that will mean a deflationary crunch of some kind. It will mean positive real interest rates. It will mean um, uh, these will be imposed by the market uh, and perhaps by donors or, or whatever. Um, they won't be imposed by, by, by the local authority, which brings me to the, the, my, 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 my sort of final point. But before I get there, um, I think there's a couple of other points I wanted to make. One of those, um, government will have a terrible problem um, in trying to uh, budget uh, and balance its budget. First of all, it's got itself into a mess by saying, well, government departments, parastatals and so on, must charge in local currency. Um, uh, so in other words, if you're, you're the GMB, you're selling your maize in ZWL, but some of what you're paying the growers is in US dollars. Where do those US dollars come from? either from government or you go out and buy them. Uh, and uh, the, the GMB uh, balance sheet would, would just look even more horrible than it looks already. Um, so that, they're on the hiding to nothing. The same is true of government. Government is paying a big chunk or a significant chunk of pensions and salaries and so on in US dollars. Where are those US dollars going to come from? 
the 25% that is t surrender from exporters, which is about 125 million a month, no, not enough. Um, and you're, you're feeding an auction, what, 80 million a month, something like that at the current rate. Where, where is all this money going to come? Where are these dollars going to come from? And in that sense, um, uh, the, minister, uh, the governor may, may be right when he says they're not enough dollars. I think the best chance of success is a broad package of, of reforms. And I mean reforms. I don't mean what the IMF and the World Bank call reforms. I mean real reforms um, that would, in fact, uh, hand over effective economic power to outsiders from the IMF or the World Bank or the donors or whatever, unless um, something else changes. Let me leave you with a question. In two months' time, the country goes to elections. Um, I'm not a political analyst or scientist or anything, but I would put my money on uh, no change. Uh, although we have got rising unemployment, m millions, yes, living at or below the poverty line, um, the electorate will...